Hey, welcome back guys. So now that we know how to allow access to a user on their profile, if they are logged in and re or redirect them to the login page, if they're not, we can move on and retrieve their data. So to do that, I'll go back to profile.php. Okay, now here is where we are echoing the everything is fine. So this is the point we're supposed to retrieve the user's data. So let's do that just now. Let me leave some space here. Now to do that, we have to create a class that loads user data. So to do that, once we create the class, we'll need to include it here. So let me just do that in advance. I'm going to call that uh, file user.php inside the classes folder. Then I'll go back here. And since I know that I'll create this uh, Actually, let me just create it right here. Let me say new file and we're going to save it. We'll save it in classes and we'll save it as user.php. Okay. So let's add our PHP tag here. And then we create a class. Since we know it's a class we are creating, we're going to call it user capital U like that. And there we go. So there is our class, just the same format as we have been creating with these others. So in here, what I'm going to need is a function. It's going to be a public function that retrieves user data. So I'm going to say public function because we will access it from outside the class. So it's a public function. I'm going to say, I'm, go I'm just going to call it get data because it will be getting users data. Now, what, what are we going to use to get the data is the ID right there. Because remember, the ID is all we have at this point. So let's use that instead, okay? So in order to retrieve that particular data, what I need to do first is to create a database, uh, a database object. So this is coming from the database class that we created and then I'm going to say now db uh, read because that's the function in there and then we'll give it a query to read from and then since we are reading we need to capture the result so because we did all that work on creating this class it makes it very easy to read from the database from now on so that's the result. So we are getting some data. Now it's very possible that we could not get, it's possible that we might not get any results from, uh, from this user. So we must do something if we don't get any result. So we'll say if result, okay? And then we will put an else statement. That's if we don't get the result that we want. So here we're going to say, return oh sorry return false if we don't get a result we return uh, a false if we do get the results uh, we return the results so return we're going to call the results row because it's a row of data so let's create that row right here we're going to say row is equal to result oh sorry result now we know that result returns an array uh, of rows so we just want the first row which is number zero because we we just want one record from there we don't want to retrieve many users just one so we assign the first row to row the first row of the result to row zero is the first location in an array and then we return that row okay which is simple enough now we just need to create the query so what query are we going to use here so we're going to say select because that's how you read from a database select all because we need all the columns right select all from users because that's the table where we need to give it a where clause so we are very specific where user id 
because that's a column as usual. The column is user ID. There we go. Where user ID is equal to whatever that user ID is at the time. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here and say limit one like that. So I can put inverted commas here, but it's unnecessary. I just like to be consistent. All right. So here's our query. We create the database object and then we run our query. If we get a result, then we return the result. If we don't get one, we return the value false. Simple enough. And we don't need to add any properties at the top here. So it's a very simple class that we have and it's called get data. So let's actually call this one from outside in our profile. So let's get here where we retrieve the data and we are going to say, uh, we know the class is called user. So let's instantiate the class. So I'm going to uh, create a class called user is equal to new user using the user blueprint like so. And then I'm going to say user get data. So that's how we call that function in there. And then we're going to pass in the ID that we got because that's the only information we have. That's the ID, we pass it in there. Now we need to capture the data that comes from here either a false or a row. So we'll say result is equal to, okay? Now we have to make sure, let me call it user data instead. That's much more descriptive. Now it's possible we could return a false. Now if we do that, then there's something wrong uh, somehow, which is very unlikely because we've already checked if the user actually exists here. Okay, this would have returned a false if the user didn't exist, didn't exist the first time. But just in case, you never know, it's better to have some redundancy. So we're going to say if, uh, if not user data, meaning if it's false, if not user data, uh, let's uh, redirect the guy to the login. Let them log in again. Maybe something went wrong during the login process. Okay, so if the user, now if they return an actual row, it won't be a false. So we just let this pass. Then we can use this variable down here because we know that it contains the data we want. Okay, so now that we've reached at this point, let me just go down here and echo out. I'm just going to say print R user data because from what I have programmed here, we are not supposed to reach this point without having this active. So if this is empty, we would have been redirected by then. So let's echo it out. So let me go back to profile and uh, refresh. So it says unidentified variable user data. So let's see what's going on here. Now I'm using a capital letter here and that's the reason why, because right here there's a small letter. So PHP is case sensitive. So if there's a capital letter here and there's a small letter here, it's a different variable. So you have to be careful about those things. So let me refresh. And there we go. So you, you see, we get all this data, the name, the email, the password, all the sensitive data. So you don't want to do this in an active scene. So let's, let's simply paste the right data that we want. So we're just going to get the first name and last name and put it there. And what else are we going to use? I think that's uh, pretty much it that we are going to get from here because that's all the uh, information people need to see is the name, all right? Eventually we'll be able to retrieve friends and this image right here. Okay, so let me come back down here. Let's remove, everything is working fine. So let me go back here. Where does it say name? Profile peak, and this is where the name is. So the beauty of PHP is you can uh, put it right inside the HTML. So here, let's replace this with first name and last name. So 
I'm going to say. Now, since we are dealing, we are doing uh, the object oriented where you can create right here in the users class, you can create a function that connects the name automatically for you. Uh, that will make things easier, but uh, we can simply do it here. So I'm going to simply say PHP and echo something here. So I know I'm going to echo the user data like so. Now I need to know which part of the user data to, to echo out because as you know, there's memory locations here. So I want the first name and the last name. So to do that, let me go back here and say first underscore name. Okay. Now, if I save that and come back here and refresh, you're going to see that there is the first name. So to add the last name, we concatenate. So let me go out here. I'm going to put a dot and then let's put an empty string between the two because if we don't, let me show you what happens if we don't. Let me simply echo this and so the dot is a con connection and last name like that. So if I don't put that space, we'll get one name connected like that, which is not cool. So here, what we do is we put another dot and then in between here, we put an empty string space like so. And we refresh and there we go. So that's the name right here. Now to show you that this name is actually dynamic, let's go back here and check what other, let's say we have Mary Piri here. So let's try and log in as this one. So the password is one, two, three, four, and this is the email she's using. So let me log out. Now, this is what brings something uh, interesting. We need to be able to actually log out. So I'll show you how to do that. But for now, to log out our user, we're simply going to unset the user ID at the top here. So this is not the ideal way to do things, but uh, for now, while we are testing, that's what we are going to do. So we're going to unset this part so that we are logged out and redirected to the login page. And there we go. So you see, that's how I'm sure I already know now that that's how to create the uh, logout page. So let me remove that and then we can log in as somebody else. So I'll try Mary and the password is one, two, three, four and hit login. And there we go. So you see now that's Mary Perry right there. So this is how people are logged in and logged out. So now that we know how to log in and out, we're going to learn how to, uh, how to create posts here. Okay, how to add a post and also how to change the profile image and profile uh, cover, cover image and so on. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.